Yo what's up guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on core java programming so today's topic is going to be on wrapper classes in java and what is auto boxing and unboxing so in the previous couple of videos in this playlist that is java programming that we've been going through since past one month we've discussed type casting and what is automatic type casting and we also discussed about up casting and down casting so the past two videos were about all these topics so yet another video tutorial wherein there is some type of conversion and that is using the wrapper classes so if you have missed those videos you can check it out in this playlist and this java programming playlist has a lot of other video tutorials as well so we have around 30 to 35 video tutorials already by today that is 17th of may 2018 so if you are watching this video in future there would be more than 50 videos or there would be a lot of videos by then so with that being said let's start off with today's topic that is wrapper classes in java and we'll also see what is auto boxing versus unboxing so quickly open up this article in your chrome browser or any browser that you use what i'll do is i'll drop this link so this is the link to our official website that is simple snippers.tech so i'll just drop this link in the video description so that you directly come to this article or you can go to the website then go under the courses in the core java programming you'll find that article so we'll first discuss a little bit of theory and then we'll jump to the programming part so make sure you watch this video till the end because we'll cover both theory as well as practical side by side so let me just zoom in a little bit okay so a wrapper class is a class whose object wraps or contains a primitive data type so we already know about primitive data types because we've talked about variables and data types in this playlist very early probably around second or third video in this playlist so what wrapper classes are are classes which can wrap around these primitive data types so when we create an object to a wrapper class it contains a field and in this field we can store that primitive data type okay so every primitive data type has its own wrapper class so you must be wondering what exactly or why exactly do we have these wrapper classes so these wrapper classes in java basically provide the mechanism to convert primitive data types into an object and object into primitive so it's both ways that is auto boxing and unboxing so we'll see that so the reason why we do this is because in some cases we cannot directly use the primitive data type but we need some objects so we can convert these primitive data types in their corresponding wrapper class objects okay so that's where wrapper classes come into picture so this is a diagram which shows the two ways of conversion that is both the ways that is auto boxing which is conversion of primitive data types which are in blue over here to their wrapper classes to their object types which is in green over here and then vice versa is known as unboxing okay so the eight classes of java.lang package are known as wrapper classes so these classes are in the java.lang package we already have talked about what are packages in this playlist so yeah just another tabular representation of this image so we have the primitive data types in blue we have their corresponding wrapper classes in green so then auto boxing is automatic conversion of primitive type to object of their corresponding wrapper class is known as auto boxing for example conversion of int to integer class so this is that conversion int to integer class long to long double to double and so on so you can see primitive starts off with lower case but the classes start off with capitalized letter now the java compiler applies auto boxing when a primitive value is passed as a argument to a method that expects an object of corresponding wrapper class or the primitive value is assigned to a variable of the corresponding wrapper class so there are the two cases when auto boxing happens and here is an example so we'll see that example in live action also you can pause this video and check it out as well it's nothing great we have a integer primitive type and then we have the integer class and i create a new object i and then i say i equals to a so this primitive data type a is now converted to an object of integer type i okay and the opposite process is known as unboxing so it's just the reverse process as i mentioned of auto boxing converting an object of wrapper class to its corresponding primitive type is known as unboxing now the java compiler applies unboxing when an object of wrapper class is passed as a parameter to a method that expects a value corresponding to the primitive type or when an object of wrapper class is assigned to a variable of the corresponding primitive type so we have an object of character type ch and we are storing a letter a and then i'm declaring a primitive char variable and then i'm passing ch to a so then the unboxing happens okay so again talking about the need of wrapper classes so they convert primitive data type into objects and vice versa right so they help us in auto boxing and unboxing 
Now objects are needed if you wish to modify the arguments passed into a method. Let me read it out again. Objects are needed if you wish to modify the arguments passed in a method. And this is because primitive types are passed by value, right? So if you pass by value, if you pass any primitive type by value in a method, and if you are performing some operations on that value and changing that value, when you ultimately come out of that method, the original value is not going to be changed because it is passed by value. However, if you are passing an object, it is passed by reference and then you can manipulate the value and it will reflect back in the original object. So that's the difference. I'll talk about pass by value and pass by reference in more detail in some other video tutorial. But if you're coming from a C++ background, I'm pretty sure you must have got an idea of what is a difference between pass by value and pass by reference because in that C++ tutorial series, I have a separate video which addresses this topic that is pass by value, pass by reference and pass by address. So yeah, the classes in java.util package handles only objects and hence wrapper classes help in this case also. So there are some situations wherein you can only operate using objects and you cannot pass in direct primitive values. So that's where wrapper classes come into picture. There are data structures in the collection framework. So collection framework is a totally different subject which we will address in further videos. So we have certain classes like array list, vectors, which store object reference types and not primitive types. And also an object is needed to support synchronization in multi-threading. So again, multi-threading is a totally different subject which we will cover in further videos. So advantages of auto boxing unboxing, it helps developers write cleaner code, makes it easier to read. The technique lets us use primitive types and wrapper objects interchangeably and we don't need to perform any typecasting explicitly. So in the examples, if you see, we did not do any typecasting. We did not have to manipulate or change it. We just simply assigned a primitive type or an object type to a primitive type and vice versa, right? And the program handled it all properly. So this was a little bit of theory. Let's jump into action and let's see a little small program. So if I'm saying int x equals to five, now this is a primitive integer type, right? Integer variable. Now I want to create an object. So I can say integer. So this is that class. Now I'm going to say i or I'll say obj is equal to x. So when I do this, by default, the object or the instance variable inside the object gets assigned with x value. So every class, every wrapper class that is integer, boolean or whatever class has an instance variable of the same type which stores the value, right? So now what I can do is I can use this object and I can call some methods. So you can see these are the methods that I can use with this object. However, I cannot use methods with the plain variables, right? I cannot say x dot but I can say obj dot because now it is converted to an object and an object has methods as well as instance variables both, right? So now I can print system dot out dot print ln x colon and I'm going to print x and I'm also going to append obj value and I'm going to say obj. If I save this, if I run this, you'll see that we get fine and fine in both the cases. So there you go. You can see and we I suppose can also use a method along with the obj object so I can use obj dot int value so I suppose that will print the integer value although it's not necessary you can see the message is being popped up saying unnecessary unboxing which is not needed so if I run this I'll again get 5 so if I just want the integer value which the object is storing then I can call the method which essentially is not needed over here but you can use them you can have that flexibility of using methods along with the object similarly we have the different wrapper classes for the eight different primitive types we saw in the theory, right? So you can test it out. You can create different primitive types and their corresponding objects and you can perform auto boxing and unboxing. And let me know in the comments how it went and if you have any queries. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. You can check out the article. I've linked that article in the description. Bookmark this website because there are a lot of tutorials and not just tutorials, but a lot of articles like artificial intelligence, ethical hacking, autonomous vehicles and whatnot. So there, it's basically a blog website. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video. I hope you understood the concept of wrapper classes, auto boxing, unboxing and why we need it. And if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment to let me know how this video was. Share it with your friends if you haven't. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel, guys, because there are a lot of video tutorials which are technology oriented, computer science oriented. And I've been uploading a lot of content regularly. So you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.